Here's your news for November 9, 2019. We're starting off with some big news from this week's edition of Friday Night SmackDown as The New Day are once again the show's tag team champions. Meeting in Manchester, England, the team of Kofi Kingston and Big E upset the revival for the gold in a match that should have taken place last week but was delayed thanks to the issues traveling home from Crown Jewel. At the pay-per-view, both teams were a part of the tag team gauntlet to decide the best tag team in the world, and though neither group won the accolade, it was the New Day that eliminated Dash and Dawson. With this latest win, the group are seven-time tag team champions in WWE, while Kofi Kingston extends his record for being a tag team champion to an astonishing near 1,100 days as a tag team champion. Many fans are still upset with how abruptly Kofi's reign as WWE Champion came to an end thanks to Brock Lesnar on the premiere of SmackDown on Fox, but it's good to see the company hasn't given up on the talented superstar altogether. While Kofi and Big E had quite the win on this week's edition of SmackDown, one superstar who may be getting a huge win of her own is Asuka, who is already one half of the WWE Women's Tag Team Champions. This week on Raw, the Kabuki Warriors came up short against Charlotte and Natalya, with the Empress tapping out to Natalya's sharpshooter, but according to reports, it was Asuka who was supposed to get the win. The reason for this is that on commentary, the announcers repeatedly mentioned Asuka beating Raw Women's Champion Becky Lynch at the Royal Rumble in January this year, and the rumored plan is for the two to face off again for the man's title. We won't spoil what happened on next week's Raw, which has already been filmed in the UK, but we know that something happened during the upcoming show that made a future title match between the two even more likely. If Asuka is to be the one to end Lynch's reign, she would become the third woman in history to win the women's triple crown, holding singles gold on all three brands after Charlotte, who captured the crown first, and Bayley, who became the second earlier this year. Of course, any future title match won't be taking place until after Survivor Series, as Lynch is already set to compete against NXT Women's Champion Shayna Baszler and SmackDown Women's Champion Bayley in cross-branded action. It's safe to say that 2019 has been the year of the man who has been on fire over the past year, but despite victories on pay-per-view over opponents like Charlotte, Natalya, Lacey Evans, Ronda Rousey, and Sasha Banks, the last kicker is yet to get her win back against the Empress. We've got more news for Survivor Series next, as though the show will have Raw battle SmackDown and NXT for the first time ever, the pay-per-view will still have traditional Survivor Series matches. On the latest episode of SmackDown, the WWE confirmed that Seth Rollins will be the captain of Team Raw and that the rest of the Red Brands team will be revealed on this upcoming Monday's show. The Beast Slayer is hoping to move past his Universal title loss at Crown Jewel, and getting a huge win for Raw at the very same show he debuted at seven years ago is the best way to get over The Fiend. Speaking of Survivor Series, the show will also feature a women's triple threat Survivor Series elimination match, as teams of five from each brand will battle for brand supremacy. On last night's SmackDown, Sasha Banks was announced as the team captain of the Blue Brands group, and she will be joined by Carmella and Dana Brooke, who defeated Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville to earn a spot on the team. So far, we have no idea who will take the remaining two spots for SmackDown, or who will fill any of the spots for either Raw or NXT, but expect those spots to be filled as we continue on the road to Survivor Series. While fans in Manchester certainly got their money's worth by seeing SmackDown and Raw taped live, it's what happened after the shows that has got many fans talking. After the Raw taping, the OC came out to have a bit of post-show fun, and with Gallows and Anderson by his side, United States Champion AJ Styles took great pleasure in insulting the crowd. Claiming that there were no hot moms in the UK, this mockery didn't last long, as the trio were interrupted by SmackDown's Universal Champion, The Fiend Bray Wyatt. With the arena once again bathed in red light, Wyatt was able to hold his own against the three superstars and even gave the phenomenal one the mandible claw to end the night. This confrontation was to send fans home happy, and it's unlikely that SmackDown's Universal Champion will be feuding with Raw's United States Champion, but this was a very cool interaction to see between the two. Speaking of Wyatt, The Fiend currently has no opponent for Survivor Series, but it looks like that could change very soon. During a segment that saw Sami Zayn once again confront Daniel Bryan about joining his group, the former WWE Champion was assaulted by The Fiend, as Zayn wisely ran from the scene, leaving Bryan to receive a mandible claw during the attack. This assault has led many to speculate that Wyatt's first feud as Universal Champion will be against the recently face-turned Bryan, who has had a roller coaster year since coming out of retirement in April last year. 
With that said, there have also been reports that Wyatt's first feud will be with The Miz, as the leader of the Firefly Funhouse was supposed to be a guest on Miz TV last week, which didn't happen thanks to the Saudi travel issues. A feud against either man would be great for The Fiend, who has become one of WWE's most popular superstars in 2019, and fans will have to stay tuned to see where this attack on Daniel Bryan goes from here. We spoke earlier about Kofi Kingston's shocking loss to Brock Lesnar on the premiere of SmackDown on Fox, and this week, the new SmackDown Tag Team Champion spoke more openly about what happened. Speaking to TalkSport as part of WWE's UK tour, Kingston admitted he was disappointed with losing the title in seconds to the part-time Brock Lesnar at the premiere edition of SmackDown on Fox, saying, We've been talking about this deal with Fox, and I've been lucky to be at the forefront of it all since the beginning. So, to have it end like that was a little disheartening, but it is what it is, it's not like I can really do anything about it. Winning the WWE Championship from Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania 35, Kofi's feel-good moment was the culmination of an 11-year career in WWE. But despite the emotional victory, not everyone was a fan. Shortly after his win, many people claimed that the Ghanaian superstar was too small to be champion, and WWE Hall of Famer superstar Billy Graham even encouraged Kofi to take steroids to appear bigger. In response, Kofi told TalkSport, I don't really care about anyone's opinion, but everyone wants to have an opinion. It's my job to go out and people talk about, oh, he's not big enough to be the champion. Well, I'm the champ, so I am big enough to be the champ. It'll be interesting to see whether Kofi reclaims that top spot on SmackDown as world champion, but for now, it seems the New Day star has been moved back to the tag team division. We've spoken a lot about WWE so far today, but we do have some big AEW news as the company builds towards its full gear pay-per-view this Saturday. It was reported a while back that wins and losses will matter in the new company, and that certainly seems to be the case, as AEW has released its first ranking of wrestlers since their launch in January this year. For the men's division, Cody Rhodes was able to take the top spot after a series of impressive matches, knocking Pac down to second with the hangman Adam Page taking the bronze. Kenny Omega and Jon Moxley took 4th and 5th place respectively, and it's very interesting that AEW World Champion Chris Jericho isn't on the list. Becoming the first AEW World Champion at All Out, Jericho has been on fire since joining the company, but that doesn't seem to have translated well into wins and losses. If anything, this report will give Jericho even more ammunition for another amazing promo with the Inner Circle, and the first ever WWE Undisputed Champion will hope to earn a spot in the top 5 this Saturday when he defends the gold against Cody Rhodes. We're looking at Impact Wrestling next, as the company is prepared to make history at their upcoming Hard to Kill event on January 12th next year. At the show, Tessa Blanchard will make history as the first woman to compete for a Men's World Championship on pay-per-view when she faces Impact World Champion Sammy Callahan with the title on the line. This isn't the first time the pair have competed against each other, as the pair faced off in the main event of Slammiversary 17 this past July, which, despite a valiant effort by Blanchard, saw Callahan win thanks to a series of DDTs and pile drivers. This month, Callahan captured the Impact World Championship from Brian Cage on the show's first airing on Axis TV, and the self-proclaimed Death Machine has been willing to take on all comers ever since. Though China did briefly become the number one contender for the WWF title in 1999, the ninth wonder of the world never got to compete for the gold, as Impact will make history with their hard-to-kill main event in January 2020. Back to WWE now and once again more stories have come out about the delays following Crown Jewel, as the reports of the deal between the company and Saudi Arabia continues to be in jeopardy. On The Jerry Lawler Show, the King spoke about Vince McMahon's reaction backstage, and while addressing the entire roster before this week's Raw, called the trip the worst travel experience in his 49 years in the wrestling business. Strong words by the chairman, McMahon also tried to explain the mechanical faults on the plane, which ultimately required a piece of equipment being flown in from Germany, though many superstars said that these issues weren't explained to them properly. AJ Styles even spoke out about the trip to the boss, saying that the event was a nightmare to live through, and given that this is just the latest in a long list of controversy and issues regarding WWE in Saudi Arabia, it's unclear just what will happen next. Though Styles may have felt comfortable speaking out about the problems, one superstar who did just that but paid the price was Styles' good brother Carl Anderson. On Twitter, Anderson joked about only returning to Saudi Arabia because he wants a new pool, and while it might have been a light-hearted comment, it didn't go down well with Triple H. 
According to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, the game was also present at the backstage meeting and specifically called out Anderson for making jokes about not going back. It probably didn't help the OC member's case that his wife responded to the jokey tweet in a very serious way, claiming that she and their children were worried to death about Anderson's safety following the delay, which didn't exactly paint WWE in a good light. In an era where just a single tweet can have devastating consequences on your career, Anderson and the rest of the locker room should definitely think twice next time before they tweet something that could cause a fall in the price of shares. Though Anderson doesn't seem to have been punished at the meeting, we'll have to wait and see what comes later for him, as the best tag team in the world may be in for a couple of rough weeks. And finally, we've got some news from New Japan Pro Wrestling, as the company has confirmed the very last match in the United States of Jushin Thunder Liger. Liger's final match on US soil will take place today, November 9th at the San Jose Civic as part of the New Japan Showdown event, though there is currently no clue on who his opponent will be. This final US match is all a part of the legendary wrestler's retirement tour, which will culminate with Wrestle Kingdom 14 next January, where he will hang up his boots for good. On day one of the event, Liger will team up with fellow legends Tiger Mask, Tatsumi Fujinami, and the great Sasuke as part of an eight-man tag match, and will also have a bout on the second day of the show. As arguably the most recognizable star in Japanese wrestling history, it's only right that Liger gets the send-off he deserves as his epic career begins to truly wrap up later today.